Travis Wayne Goodsell. I was uh, going through my binders of post-it notes of videos I never got to make for you guys. I'm sure you're all disappointed. You want more than the thousands that I've already given you. Give me more, give me more, give me more, more, more. And I came across one about uh, uh, both Mormons and ex-Mormons not getting the real church history of Joseph Smith correct. And I've done videos of this. This is just a rehashing with a different presentation. But uh, to show you how ex-Mormons are getting this wrong, Mormon Stories podcast, 23 hours ago, 6.6k views, thank you very much, YouTube Mormon employee, 1583 golden plates and the Book of Mormon with LDS discussions. The thumbnail has Joseph Smith and the golden plates. The Golden Plates with LDS Discussions is the thumbnail picture. And from what I can read, because I do not want to click on this, I already know they're wrong. Today, John is joined by LDS Discussions and Nemo. You guys are giving him popularity. Don't do it. To review... None of these guys deserve popularity. To review the history of the Golden Plates as they relate to the creation of the Joseph Smith narrative, these guys are not experts. I'm the only expert in the church and out of the church. And you don't believe. So there's a Wikipedia page on Golden Plates. According to Latter-day Saint belief, the Golden Plates, also called the Gold Plates, or in some 19th century liter literature, the Golden Bible, are the source from which Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon, a sacred text of the faith. Some witnesses, and this should have been the red flag for everyone involved. Some witnesses described the plates as weighing from 30 to 60 pounds, gold in color, and composed of thin metallic plates engraved with hieroglyphics on both sides and bound with 3D shaped rings. 3D shaped? 3D shaped? <laughs> Did any of you any of you no you didn't check the joseph smith papers of the 1830 edition of the history that's in our text in our scripture canon no not a single one of you did this so i will read it from the joseph smith papers josephsmithpapers.org slash paper dash summary slash history dash 1838 dash 1856 dash volume dash a dash one dash 23 dash December dash 1805 dash 30 you get the point nobody wants to go to the primary source documents everybody goes to hearsay Oh, they said that. I like that one. I'm going to choose that for my truth. Pisses me off. Because both sides are wrong on what actually happened. So, we'll cut to the main part. He called me by name and said unto me that he was a messenger from the presence of God to me. And that his name was Nephi. And then somebody put in a little bracket thing with an asterisk, Moroni. 
and then another bracket, an exclamation, evidently a clerical error, C, book, doc, and amp, semicolon, cov, section 50, paragraph 2, section 106, paragraph 20, also elders journal, volume 1, no, it's not a clerical error. That God had a work for me to do, and that my name should be had for evil among the Mormons who will destroy me and murder me, in my 19 July 1840 talk, which will not be published in the Doctrine and Covenants, by that same Judas, who I name, you guys are not reading. You're not doing your research. Uh, skip down. He said there was a book deposited written upon. I don't see golden here. It's gold. The primary source document says Nephi and gold. And neither Mormon nor ex-Mormon sticks to the primary source document. You all go for the hearsay. <sighs> Piss me off. Uh, I think I'll leave that up and I'll link you to it. Assuming I don't forget or the internet doesn't go down. Let me do a copy and paste on a word program so just in case something happens. know that Putin was poisoned. He doesn't have Parkinson's. The most obvious thing in the world, and everybody misses it, somebody tried to poison him. They tried to assassinate Putin. Hello? That's why he has the tremors. That's why he sits so far away from everybody. Hello? That's not a, a trick question. And so, yeah, why? Why Nephi? Why gold plates? Because there's other stuff that people are missing in church history. We'll go to Joseph Smith Sr. in Wikipedia. Joseph Sr. was one of, also one of the eight witnesses of the Book of Mormon, which Mormons believe was translated by Smith Jr. from Golden Plates. <laughs> Early life. They took it out of the top summary thing after I had exposed that this was the case. And they still will not put in the citation. Everybody knows the citation. He's published in listings of those records that survived. We know this is a fact. Joseph Smith Sr. was raised to the degree of Master Mason, which is degree number three, on 7 May 1818 in Ontario Lodge number 23 of Canandaigua, New York. Did you look on your maps to see where Canandaigua, New York is? In relation to the Manchester Farm and Palmyra. No? Hmm. You're 
more interested in spreading the lie of Moroni and Golden. And so, yes, treasure digging. Copper plates weren't worth anything back in those days. They are now. We get a lot of thefts here in Utah of copper thefts. But again, treasure digging was not profitable. They made no money off of it. They can't do this for a career. They die without money to buy food. Think, people. Think. And so what's with the Freemasonry then? Did any of you, any of you, check Heber C. Kimball? No? Why not? So frustrating. The answers are blatantly obvious and right before our eyes, and nobody will simply Google search. In 1923, Kimball received the three craft degrees of Freemasonry in the lodge at Victor Flats, Ontario County, New York. One year, huh? Took senior 18 years. In 1824, he sent a petition to the chapter at where? Canandaigua, New York where Joseph Smith Sr. is the Master Mason of that lodge. Huh. To receive the York Rite degrees of Royal Arc Masonry. That's number seven ranking in the York Rites. Scottish Rites are completely different. And depending on where you were in the United States, they were also different. Western New York was different than other places in the United States back in that time. So he's claiming he made Master Mason in one year and in 1823, which means he was 22 years old approximately, depending on whether it was before or after his birthday. Uh-huh, he just barely turned legal a year previous. He was 21 years of age of an adult back then. And so he's now saying, hey, I went to Joseph Smith Sr. and gave him a petition to skip to the seventh rank. His petition was accepted. Why is he not mentioning Joseph Smith Sr.? Well, he tells us why. As he reported, anti-Masons anti had burned down the chapter building in Canandaigua. Uh, there's no records that show that I was approved, but I was approved. Uh -huh. Oops, records did exist. He never went there. Kimball is lying to us. He knows some things. And what are those things? Well, the York Rites have the highest rank as Knights Templar. You know, Friday the 13th, Holy Grail Bloodline from King David, New Jerusalem in America. Any of this sounding familiar? They won't link you on Joseph Smith Sr.'s page to New Israelites. You have to go to New Israelites to see possible connections to Joseph Smith Sr. Just will not tell you. Now here's an interesting twist. You'd have to know about it. William Morgan, anti-Mason. William Morgan had finally 
got a publisher, David Miller, in Batavia, New York. And look on your maps to see where it is. To uh, front him uh, to work on publishing some books that was going to expose something with Freemasonry. We don't know what it is, per se. <laughs> because in order to make up the money that he lost, uh, David Miller published a book under William Morgan's name of simply the three uh, degrees of masonry. That's it. Ooh. <laughs> no big secret exposed. <clears throat> Nonetheless, because you can just be a visitor, sit in, and know all of that information. <laughs> it's not a secret. <laughs> Nonetheless, he was working on a book. He had his farm in Batavia, right by the press, but he doesn't work on it there. Instead, yeah, they think that there's a connection to the Smiths because his wife, his widowed, the judge finally consented that he'd been disappeared long enough that he's considered dead. And so she was then free to marry another guy who was able to take care of her. Because you see, women, in those days, you didn't have rights. You were property. Your husband paid for you to be his sex slave. That's why the women's suffrage movement was necessary, and the civil rights movement with the Equal Rights Amendment that Utah purposely denied you. Because of the church. But they're not sexist. And so, why was he spending all his time in Canandaigua, New York? That's where he was arrested. What's he doing there? His home is in Batavia. He's working on the book to expose something about Freemasonry that's going on. And he's in Canandaigua. And on September 11th, oh, that's a common date. Gee, that's when Mountain Meadows massacre occurred. Huh. Wonder if there's a connection. 1826. One year before Joseph Smith was supposed to obtain the gold plates. And if you're unfamiliar with the Knights Templar, Egyptian gold plates. The Pope was accusing them of worshipping the Egyptian deities and referring to the gold plates rather than the Christian Jesus Bible. And that was Friday the 13th. And so what, what's going on here? If he was in Canandaigua, and he's a York right, as uh, it says, he had been approved for the Royal Ark rank, certifying under oath that he had obtained the uh, in-between ranks. Yet Heber C. Kimball is claiming, oh yeah, in one year I became a Master Mason, and then I petitioned the next year at Canandaigua for a royal ark. Do you see what Heber knows? Why did he join the church then? He doesn't want us to make the connection to the Smiths. He's unaware, doesn't have prophetic revelation, that we're going to have Google search in the future. A test, a test is coming, Heber C. Kimball. We're going to expose you. 
So yes, that's why there's inverted pentagrams all over this church. They murdered Joseph Smith because they knew what the Smiths did in Canandaigua, New York. And they saved America. It was Heber that was the threat. So, that's all I'm going to give you. I've given you all the other information you need to know. 19 July, 1840. That should be the end of the church. If everybody would just read it. I've made a video clip of it for you. Do you not understand? This church is the Book of Mormon's prophecy of the Great and Abominable. It's not complicated. So William Morgan disappears and next year, oh, I found gold plates. The answers are there and nobody wants to know them. They instead battle out the lies. Pass me off. <laughs>